Avalanche Lake is one of my personal favorite and most popular areas in all of Glacier National Park. When you combine the relative ease of this hike with some of the best views in all of Glacier, it's easy to see why it's one of the most frequently visited destinations in the park. And on today's video, we're going to cover everything you should know before hiking out to Avalanche Lake. Along the way, I'll be sharing with you some footage I shot during my trip. So let's get started. For those of you who aren't aware, Glacier National Park is located in northern Montana near the border with Canada. Avalanche Lake can be accessed via the West Glacier entrance. The West Glacier entrance drops you off near Apgar Village in Lake McDonald. If you aren't camping or staying at one of the lodging options located inside the park, I'd recommend staying in the nearby town of Whitefish for your stay. The drive from Whitefish to West Glacier entrance takes approximately 30 minutes. Once inside the park, the drive to Avalanche Lake Trailhead will add another 30 or so minutes. The Avalanche Lake Trailhead is situated near the Lake McDonald Lodge. Be mindful that lodging options inside Glacier National Park are limited, expensive, and they tend to book up a full year in advance. So if you're interested in staying at the lodge, you'll need to plan way ahead. Also, don't forget you'll need a Going to the Sun Road reservation to enter the park during peak season. If you aren't familiar with the National Park Time Entry Reservation System, I've included a link to my full guide discussing that process in the video description below. Be sure to check that out because the park rangers will turn you away at the entrance if you don't have one. Now, after passing Lake McDonald Lodge, you'll eventually see signage for Avalanche Lake and Trail of the Cedars. The trailhead starting point is adjacent to the main road so it's hard to miss. Parking here can be a bit of a pain so I'd recommend attempting this hike first thing in the morning. The Avalanche Lake Trailhead actually spurs off from Trail of the Cedars, which means you'll want to explore these two areas at the same time. You won't need to make a separate stop for Trail of the Cedars. The hike out to Avalanche Lake is relatively easy since the trail is mostly flat, wide, well maintained, and shaded. Sun exposure won't be a huge issue here but don't forget to pack sunscreen just in case and always pack plenty of water and salty snacks. There aren't any technical portions or steep drops to this hike, making it extremely safe, so it's great for small children. During your trek out to the lake, you'll notice a huge stream fed by mountain snowmelt. This is a great place to stop for a photo op or a splash of cold water to cool off on hot summer afternoon. While Avalanche Lake is slightly less remote than other areas of the park, it can still be a great place to run into wildlife. We encountered deer, marmots, and rabbits during our hike out to the lake. Wildlife encounters can be the highlight of a visit to Glacier National Park. Just be sure to keep your distance and hike with bear spray. If you're flying Flying in from out of town, you can typically rent bear spray at the Glacier International Airport near the baggage claim. While we didn't encounter any bears during our avalanche lake hike, we did have two encounters in other areas of the park. I repeat, do not hike in Glacier National Park without bear spray. You probably won't need it, but you need to be prepared just in case. The full length of this hike is about six miles, but you can shave off a full mile by not hiking out to the far end of the lake. The best views of Avalanche Lake are at the near end, so don't feel obligated to hike all the way out to the far end of the lake. I'd recommend packing a lunch or even some cold beers to enjoy once you reach Avalanche Lake. The rocky beach is relatively spacious and offers out of this world views of the surrounding mountains. Bear Hat Mountain sits to the east while Little Matterhorn resides to the south. Don't forget to kick off your hiking boots, roll up your pant legs, and wade out into the icy cold waters of Avalanche Lake. Hands down, it will be one of the most memorable activities you do during your visit. And for the avoidance of doubt, yes, you can swim in the water here, but it's usually very cold so you might not last very long. If you're in need of a restaurant, room or place to throw on your swimsuit, there is a pit toilet located just before you reach the lake. Otherwise, your best restroom option will be near the parking lot where the trailhead originates. Also be mindful that cellular service is going to be very limited in Glacier National Park, especially around Avalanche Lake. If you need to download maps or directions, be sure to do so before driving deep into the park. Even GPS can be spotty at times. If you're still trying to determine when you'll visit Glacier National Park, I highly recommend visiting during the summer. Going to the Sun Road and trails at higher elevations can be covered with snow even going into mid-July. Avalanche Lake does sit at a lower elevation and should be accessible earlier in the season, but chances are you'll want to time your visit to ensure other activities are open as well. And for anyone traveling with pets, Avalanche Lake, like most areas of Glacier National Park, is not pet friendly. Pets are generally only allowed in the parking lots and other developed areas of Glacier National Park. If you found this video helpful and informative, don't forget to drop a like. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to ensure you don't miss out on any future travel guide from my channel. For anyone doing longer hikes during their trip to Glacier National Park, like the Highline Trail or hiking to Iceberg Lake, I've also included a link to my complete day hike packing checklist in the video description below. Be sure to check that out as well. Okay, that's it for today's video. I'm Wes Murgard with WorkRemotelyLiveRemotely.com and thanks for watching.